Gmail filters are a pretty incredible way to declutter your inbox, save time, and keep your head clear. But as you accumulate rules, managing filters becomes such a hassle that it almost offsets their benefits. And the AI solutions are all either unreliable or too generic for the unique types of emails and labels and workflows of individual users. So I created a system for managing my filters in a simple, nicely structured Google Sheet. And honestly, I cherish it for the friction it relieves and the time it saves every single week. So I templatized it and made it easy for anyone to configure. In the sheet, each row is a rule, like emails with order confirmation in the subject line. In the first column, I pick the label given to emails that match the rule, and then I specify the part of the email to test, which can be the sender, the recipient, the subject, or the body of the email. And then I provide the text to search within that location. And if I want a rule to have two conditions, I add another type and value. And that's it. I keep them sorted by label and use conditional formatting to color them. You can configure it for yourself in under 15 minutes. I'll show you each step here. And everything you need is in the companion post on the streamline.ai, which I've linked to within the video description. And while you're there, consider subscribing to the Streamline for more tools and insights around AI, automation, and productivity. So let's jump into it. Behind the scenes, Zapier connects the Google Sheet with Gmail. You'll copy and customize a template for each of these tools. If you haven't used Zapier, this is a perfect opportunity to learn it and gain a really valuable modern skill. Zapier integrates and automates your apps for an enormous boost to your efficiency and productivity. Before you begin, you wanna make sure your labels have been created in Gmail. And if you're new to Zapier, go ahead and create an account and briefly orient yourself. In the post on the Streamline, I link to Zapier's introductory resources. You can start on the free plan or a free trial of the professional plan, but eventually you'll need to upgrade in order to use this multi-step Zap. You'll soon come to appreciate the enormous return on an investment in Zapier. And the first step is to duplicate the Google Sheet that you'll also find linked within the Streamline post. Click File and make a copy, and then you can name it and save it however you want to. I like to indicate the Gmail account that's associated with the filters I'm managing. And within the sheet, the Labels tab stores your labels for choosing when you create your rules. So click on that tab, and below the Archive option, replace the placeholder label names with your labels. I'll use two of mine, Subscriptions and Transactions, each with my initials to indicate my personal account because I manage all of my accounts in one email client. And if you have fewer than six labels, delete the other placeholders, but keep their rows for adding labels later. And if you have more than six, continue into the white rows. If you're curious about the background coloring, I address that at the bottom of the Streamline post. And then each of your labels needs Gmail's technical ID in the Label ID column. And the easiest way to find those IDs is using Google's API reference, which I also linked within the Streamline post. When you open it, you'll see a Try This Method module to the right. So in the user ID field, enter the email address associated with the Gmail account you're managing the filters for. Click Execute, and then it may request access to your account. I'm doing that here off screen. And then you can scroll down to see a structured list of your labels. Each label includes a name, which is the friendly term you gave it. And you'll also see an ID, which is what we need to add to the Google Sheet. So for each of the labels you're creating filters for, copy its ID and paste it into the label ID column. So with your labels in place, let's add some initial rules within the Rules tab. Add at least one for each label, including Archive. And for practice, also make sure one's a combo that uses a rule one and two. So I'll leave the existing Archive rule as it is. And for the Order Confirmed rule, I'll just switch the label to my Transactions label. And then for my Subscriptions label, I'll use Morning Brew's sender address and keep rule 2 where Unsubscribe appears in the message. Now let's move on to the Zap. Access the template from the Streamline post and then click Try This Zap. Now within the Google Sheet, the Zapier Values tab tells you exactly how to populate each field within your Zap. And to generate some of those values, it needs the step IDs from your copy of the Zap. So for the first five steps, you'll populate the step ID column of the Google Sheet, which I've clearly highlighted in yellow. And for each of those steps, you can easily grab its ID by clicking on the step within Zapier, and then in its URL, copy the number that appears after slash draft. And then back in the Google Sheet, paste that number in the step ID column for the corresponding step. And when you do that, you'll see some of the field values in the far right column update dynamically. 
Now with your step IDs in place, you're ready to populate your zap fields. You'll see three types of values. Custom refers to values that are unique to you, such as your Gmail account. Select values you'll choose from a dropdown. And then for the copy and paste ones, you'll copy the cell in the Google Sheet and paste it directly into Zapier. So for the first step, which is triggered by a new email in Gmail, we have two values. The first is connecting your Gmail account, which Zapier may do for you automatically if you've used it before. And then for the mailbox, we only want it to trigger for new emails in the inbox. And you want to test each step to keep the zap valid. Don't worry about the outcomes unless it throws an error. For this trigger step, you can choose any email as the test record. And the next step uses Zapier's Formatter app. For the Transform field, we want to select Spreadsheet Style Formula. And then the formula will copy and paste directly from the Google Sheet. And then for the Google Sheet step, connect your account again if it's not already done for you. Then if you use multiple drives within your Google Drive account, choose the one where you duplicated the Google Sheet template. Then choose the spreadsheet as you saved it. And for the worksheet, you want admin. Then the columns and row count, you can copy and paste or enter yourself. For the looping step, you'll enter two name value pairs and copy and paste all of them from the Google Sheet. And I'll speed through the rest here for you to have for reference. I'll slow it down here for a quick explanation. For indicating the message to remove labels from, in order to paste the value from the Google Sheet, you may need to toggle over to Custom. And that'll allow you to paste the value in the field above. And you may need to do that for the final step as well. And when you test your last step, you'll likely get an error, which is okay. You can choose to skip testing for that one, at which point you can publish this app to launch your system. Try sending a test email that matches one of your initial rules. And don't worry if you see them in your inbox briefly. They may appear for a few seconds while Zapier executes. Then going forward, as you receive emails you'd like filtered, you can add rules neatly and effortlessly to your Google Sheet. If you hit a snag at any point, shoot me a question within the YouTube comments or respond to any of the streamlined emails.